I sold my FTX because it... Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick, before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes today because I recently sold the FTX and I know a lot of people are going to ask why. So don't take this as a FTX bashing video because that's not at all what it is. Now, I am going to say some things negative about the FTX. That doesn't mean I don't like the radio at all. I actually did quite like the radio, and I liked a lot of the things that Yezu is doing. It just wasn't enough to convince me to keep the radio. So first, let's talk about a few of the things that Yezu got right with this radio. A, the audio quality out of the FTX was fantastic. There is no two ways about it. That was a good sounding radio. And it was an incredibly loud radio, which if you're working in a noisy environment, could definitely be a plus. The battery life on that radio from the built-in battery, well, that was incredible as well. Now, that was both a positive and a negative because uh, it, it did have incredible battery life, but man, that thing was absolutely huge. One of the things I really did like about it though was it had that USB-C recharging capability on it. Another nice thing about that radio was the fact that it had APRS. Even with their misstep in the beginning, uh, once they got that firmware fixed about 30, 40 days after I purchased that radio, it was cool to see APRS on that radio. However, that's also one of the missteps that I think they made. And the reason I say it was a misstep is because if you're going to produce an APRS radio, you gotta put the GPS in the radio itself not as an add-on after the fact. That just seems like a money grab to me. But maybe it's the fact that they really didn't expect anybody to use that radio for APRS in the way we would do other radios that are mobile two meter only devices. And then if it's going to be a add-on uh, product, an add-on GPS, well, it shouldn't be fragile. And what I mean by that is the way they designed that GPS unit is you plugged it into a 3.5 millimeter socket on the side of the radio. Well, that's a field radio. So you know you're going to take that thing out into the field and work parks on the air and other things like that. And I just didn't feel comfortable having that GPS hanging off the side. It seemed to me that you could bump that thing pretty easily. And then you're going to be out a at least a GPS unit if you don't break the side of the radio, that port that it plugs into as well. And the same thing can kind of be said about the Bluetooth. Now, Bluetooth wasn't as big of a deal to me as it not having that GPS unit. But, come on, it's a $1,500 radio. I just think we can figure out how to put a GPS unit and a Bluetooth unit into that radio. Now let's go back to the APRS feature for a minute. While it was really cool that they did include that feature in the radio, well, it's just not something that I could see myself using on any sort of a regular basis. So, I don't know, I'm kind of torn on that. I mean, it's an HF radio. Do we really need APRS in it? And that's coming from somebody who's an huge APRS fan. Now, I really did enjoy the dual VFOs in that radio. That was, uh, that was something kind of neat that they had done. Another huge thing that I just found uh, I'd, I'd like to see more manufacturers go to is that modular approach. However, I think they missed it there as well because at first, Yezu told us that there was no way possible to separate that radio, the head from the Optima unit, that uh, HF amplifier, if you will. And this is one of those few places that me and KMRD actually agree. Since Yezu told us there was no way to separate that head and run it, uh, say, in a mobile environment, well, I opted not to get the Optima add-on unit. Now, granted, that's my own fault. I can't, I'll have to take responsibility for that. But when you tell me that it can't be separated and then you come back and say, oh, well, actually it can, 
but now I got to pay a $200 premium to get the Optima unit because, well, if you buy it separate from, uh, if you don't buy the package together in the beginning, well, that's an additional $200 tax. And I know that you want to encourage people to buy that package deal right out of the gate. So I can see them charging a little bit more, but 50% more after the fact. Well, again, that seems like a money grab to me. And part of me just felt like, well, they kind of cheated off of ICOM's homework uh, with the 705 because there was such similarities in the form factor of the FTX compared to the ICOM 705. Well, like I said, it just seems like they uh, might have copied their homework. But ultimately, it came down to the simple fact that the FTX just didn't do anything for me personally that my 705 wasn't already doing. And if I was going to stay with the FTX, then I was gonna to have to at least buy the GPS unit, and I was going to have to invest in a cage for that radio because I prefer my radios to be in a cage when I take them out into the field. Well, the 705 already has a GPS unit built in, and I've already purchased the cage for it. And honestly, I just didn't need another QRP radio. I've already got the 705 and I've got the FX4CR. I sold my 817 earlier this year to one of the patrons because I just wasn't using that radio anymore either. And ultimately, I decided that I'm not going to get a, I didn't want to keep a third QRP radio in my lineup. We are already starting to head down in this solar cycle. So it's only going to be a few more years before we are really struggling to make the good HF contacts that we're able to make today. And because of that, I want a 100 watt radio sitting on my desk. And believe it or not, I have never owned a 100 watt desktop radio. Everything that I've owned the entire time I've been a ham has always been mobile radios because I enjoy going out so much, traveling with them, taking them in the RV, taking them to do parks on the air. I just like to have things that are mobile and ready to be stuck into a backpack. However, when I heard that ICOM was going to release a 7300 Mark II, well, that was kind of the nail in the coffin for the FTX. And that really sealed the deal for me because I want to get a 100 watt radio and I think that's going to be my next purchase for an HF rig. Now again, don't think I'm just completely bashing the FTX. It was a good radio. It is a good radio. It just wasn't the right radio for me. And that's something that me and a buddy of mine talk about all the time. There's a lot of radios on the market and you have to decide which one best suits your particular application. And just because I like it or don't like it, doesn't mean it's not the right radio or the wrong radio for you. So now you know. Now you know why I got rid of the FTX. I'm going to be picking up that 7300 Mark II when it comes out next spring or next summer, or whenever the thing happens to hit the market. If you found today's information informative, please give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 730.